Today's streaming radios are useful, but they're so blah. They should fall in love with these beautiful vintage radios and have magnificent retro streaming babies. Or we could just make our own. I just love the design and artisanal touch of vintage technology. You gotta admit, they had flair back then. Back when men were men and women were computers. The craftsmanship is unparalleled, but functionally it's completely useless by today's standards. My Wi-Fi radio using an old router was a good attempt to try and upgrade this retro tech, but now there's an even better way. Introducing the Raspberry Pi Zero Wireless that's so adorable and cute you just want to pinch its little punum, yes you do. And it's the perfect candidate to revive almost any piece of retro technology. So basically the plan is to take this Raspberry Pi Zero computer, add a speaker, and set up the software to stream from your favorite music host. And it would be really cool if we can add knobs to control the volume and power in a screen that displays the album art. But let's just see how it goes. And you can find all these steps, code, schematics, and files at my project page at hackster.io. They're also a sponsor for this video, so please check out their website for more cool electronics projects like this. The first step is to get the Pi Zero up and running, and I've done this plenty of times before, so to save time, I'm gonna go for double speed this time. Ready? Here we go. Go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads and download the Raspbian operating system. Then download this free Etcher program for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And after both are done downloading, insert a microSD card into your computer and use the Etcher program to copy Raspbian to it. When it's done, take the microSD card out and plug it into your Pi Zero along with an HDMI monitor, a keyboard and mouse, and finally power. It should start booting up and when it does, you can left click on the wireless icon and connect to your wireless. Then right click on the wireless icon and choose wireless and wired network settings. From here, you can set a static IP and connect to it later. Finally, click on the menu icon and go to Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration, and under the Interfaces tab, make sure both SSH and SPI are enabled. Then on a different computer, you can use a terminal or a program like Putty to connect to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. The biggest downside to this iteration of the Pi Zero is that it doesn't have a native audio output. And obviously, it's going to be hard to make a radio without audio output. That'd be like making a bathroom without a toilet. There's several ways to fix this, however. We could split the audio out from the HDMI port, or we could make our own amp, or we could buy a pre-made amp chip. I decided to go with option C using the Adafruit Max 98357. So taking that, a speaker, and a Permaproto bonnet to keep it all organized, I connected it up like this. I decided to go with the bonnet breadboard because now all I have to do is solder some header pins onto the Pi Zero and then I can easily hook it up like this. Alright, with it all connected in your SSH terminal, you can download the software from the Adafruit website and then test it out with this script. Front. Center. It speaks! Now we're cooking with gas. Time to give it some visuals. To keep things compact, I'm using a 1.8 inch TFT LCD screen. And here's how you can connect it up to the Pi Zero bonnet. Then to finish up the software, you can type this mod probe command and then this mod probe command. And now we can test it out by downloading an image and then using this script to push that image to the LCD using the FBI image viewing program. We've got audio, we've got visuals, now we need the magic smoke the music. To play the music, honestly all you really need is a music playing program for Linux and there's tons of those available so it really just depends on where your music is stored. Personally I like Spotify so I decided to go with a program called Mopity that can stream from local music, Spotify Premium, Google Play Music, SoundCloud and several others. So in SSH, just type this command to install it and then edit the configuration file to enable Spotify with your username and password. And yes, you have to have a premium account for this to work. Then also go ahead and make sure MPD is enabled with the host name set to 0000. Now just save it and reboot. Then once you're reconnected through SSH, you can start Mopity by typing its name just like this. Um, but how do you play the music? 
Well, Mopedy is an MPD server, so you can use any type of MPD client and connect to it by pointing to your Pi's static IP address. Then you can control the music and the playlists remotely. And so that you don't have to keep manually starting Mopedy every time the Pi reboots, you can have it auto-launch by copying over your Mopedy configuration file and then enabling it in systemctl. Now to take the nostalgia angle to the max, I thought it'd be really cool to add some physical knobs to control the volume and the power. So I ended up getting a couple of push button rotary encoders that can be twisted as well as pushed. For the first knob, I wanted to use it to turn the power on and off, but cutting to the power while the Pi is on can actually damage the Pi. So instead, I'm just gonna shut down the operating system. Then we'll use another switch for cutting the power. Using the Gregory Ilias website as inspiration, I can connect up the rotary encoders to the Pi bonnet like this. And then on SSH, I made a directory for scripts and then cloned the software from his GitHub account and moved it to the scripts directory. To make it run as a service whenever the Pi reboots, we can create a new systemd file and call it pyshutdown.service and copy this information to it. Saving it, we can then enable it through systemctl and start it. Then after a reboot, you can press the rotary encoder button to restart the Pi, and then holding down the button for more than five seconds will shut down the operating system. Now for the second knob, I wanted to control the volume, and luckily I found a good website resource on modmypi.com. And I made one small adjustment to their tutorial, switching the DTGPIO port to port number 27 instead of 18, which was already being used by the speaker. Here's how it connected to the Pi Bonnet, and here's how the Pi Bonnet looks now with everything connected. Again, you can get these steps, diagrams, and schematics from my hackster.io project page. Then you can just clone the code from my GitHub page and again move it to the scripts folder. Feel free to improve on my basic code by forking it on GitHub. Now we can auto start it the same way by creating a systemd service, pasting in these contents and enabling it, starting it and rebooting. So far we've got the guts of a pretty functional little radio, but there's one more element that I wanted to add that should take this project to the next level. I thought it'd be cool to display the album art of the current song that's playing on the LCD screen. So what you can do is just install those prerequisites, get a Last.fm developer's account, and then clone the code from my GitHub page and add it to the scripts folder. Then just create a new service like we did before and call this one coverart.service, enable it, start it, and reboot it. To make this whole radio portable, I'm using a 2500 milliamp hour power bank that's normally used to charge cell phones. And being very careful with a highly flammable lithium polymer battery, I took the case apart and then desoldered the USB board and the USB connector to extend the wires. And I also added a side switch to turn it off and on. All right, now it's time to beautify these guts by giving them a home. One option is to go with an old radio case if you have one available and just fit all this inside of it. But since I didn't have one, I decided to make my own. So scouring the web for ideas, I stumbled across this awesome looking 1938 Emerson AX212 clock radio. So I modeled it out using Tinkercad, measuring my components to make sure they fit and then printed it out on a 3D printer. And to give it a nice retro texture, I also spray painted it with a bronze textured spray paint. And once it dried, I then hot glued everything into place, turned it on, and let the music play. Again, you can visit my project page for details on how to make this, and you can watch my video log on the build here. How would you make a streaming radio? Let me know in the comments below. And what ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, 
or donate at tinkernut.com slash donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.